What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my budget and my finances per month and how much I spend on Jackson now that he is eight months of age. But before we get straight into it, I would love if you guys could hit that like button as it really helps in the YouTube algorithm in spreading this video so that others could potentially be helped and informed by it. But let's just get straight into the finances. So I have some stats on my phone that I researched and according to the American Pet Products Association, APPA, 2019, $95.7 billion was spent on our pets in the US. So yes, in terms of pets, that could be cats, parrots, dogs, of course, hamsters, even just pets in general. But the fact that $96 billion were, were spent in the pet industry slash market is just crazy. So to break it down into categories, pet food and treats are the highest spending category with $36.9 billion. And coming in second to that is the vet care and product sales. Of course, you can't not budget on helping your dog health-wise. Coming in at $29.3 billion. Third place is supplies, live animals, and OTC medicine. And then fourth place is categorized as other services at $10.3 billion. And other services include boarding, grooming, insurance, training, pet sitting, walking, and all the services outside of the vet care. The reason why I kind of show these numbers is because it gives you a little bit of an estimate on how much on average as a society as a whole are what areas of the pet lifestyle that people tend to pay a lot more at. So obviously again, food, then come second is your, the healthcare. So really when you're really reflecting, as I'm going to re be reflecting on my budget, when you guys are reflecting on your guys' budget, you can see like, okay, am I spending a little bit more on treats than the average person? Just to give you guys an idea. According to rover.com, 58% of all dog owners don't have a designated budget for their dog. The annual cost of owning a dog can range on average from $650 per year to $2,115 a year, with the most budget-minded pet parents spending less than $1,000 per year. So obviously that range is probably due to if your dog is a puppy, because as I'm sure you guys know, there are a lot of puppy upfront cost that is can, that can really add up right at the start that could be from the starting shots that could be to adoption fees buying fees all these upfront costs that you won't necessarily have to pay yearly later in life so if you're thinking about getting a dog or a puppy and would like to think about the budget don't forget to budget those first time costs and then also when thinking about the long run you can exclude those puppy costs and kind of budget how much it will cost yearly and we'll get straight into what I pay. From eight months of age, ideally I would think that it would be changing as much yearly from this point on. So for my budget per month, again, it is based right now that Jackson is at eight months of age. And again, I don't see it changing that much yearly after this point on. Side note for things that might last longer than a month, for example, Jackson's dog food, which I tend to buy the bigger portion size, which can last to two and a half to three months. I'll be breaking it down how much it would cost per month. So let's get started with Jackson's food. He eats Purina Pro Plans, salmon and rice for puppy, and for sensitive stomachs and I bought the bag at PetSmart for around and a, a little side note I'll be rounding up just to be a little bit more on the saver side in terms of budgeting so I bought the bag for $53 and I got that bag early in December and it is now February so it's been lasting for two months and I'll probably estimate that I have a few more weeks left for a total of three months but to break it down per month $53 divided by three again I'm rounding up it is about $18 per month on food so again if you guys haven't seen the video yet long story short Jackson has been diagnosed with hip dysplasia and with that comes the, obviously the treatments and managing the pain the uncomfortable that it may bring. I got them joint supplements and the joint supplements I got them, I got them actually right here. They are the hip and joint support by Easy Strider. And these were about $20 at PetSmart. And based on the serving size, these will probably last two months. So again, to break it down per month, it'll be $10 per month for these joint supplements. With the 
joint supplements to treat the hip dysplasia. I also got salmon oil, which is actually really good for omega-3 fatty acids. And if you guys don't know, omega-3s really help with the joints again. This was actually about $20 at PetSmart 2. And this is a big bottle. So assuming this will last two months, two to three months, again, I would say $10 per month for this salmon oil. So moving on for treats, I typically spend around $10 per month on treats. Jackson doesn't really use treats as much. I use his kibble more and maybe even cheese for incentives on training. But when I do get treats, I tend to get them either from PetSmart, Petco, the typical pet stores. But in addition to that, sometimes I actually get them from Marshalls, from TJ Maxx. These stores typically have a dog session with discounted treats, toys, you name it. So definitely check that out if you are on a budget too. Moving on from that, another thing that we spend is actually on grooming. So because again, Jackson is a Aussie doodle, his hair is very wavy, very curly, very high maintenance. And so at every couple months or so, we actually send Jackson to the groomers to either get a trim or clean up his fur. And that costs up to $44, including tip. And again, to break it down per month, that is $22 per month and for shampoo i actually bought a new shampoo this month and we actually got top pop it was the biggest size shampoo at PetSmart, and i was like i might as well get the biggest one of whatever brand it is and so far it's been doing really well for us we got top Paws hydrating with oatmeal coconut water shampoo and this was about twenty dollars and i think this will last us for a good three to four months and so to break that down three months to per month, and again, I'm rounding up, it is about $7 per month for shampoo. Lastly, because Jackson was diagnosed with hip dysplasia, we obviously had to go to the vet this month and that vet appointment, including the vet appointment fee and the x-rays, of course, which could be really costly. You guys don't know, x-rays can be costly. It came to a total of $237 for just this month for the whole entire vet appointment. So to total everything minus the vet appointment, because this is more of an on average kind of thing, and I don't expect Jackson to go to the vet every single month. Without the vet, it is about $77 per month. And then just for this month, $77 plus the $237 vet visit, it equates to $314 just for this month. So to reiterate on average, I would probably say I spend around $70 to $80 per month on Jackson. I don't see that really changing now that I have the diagnosis of his hip dysplasia and factoring all those treatments in. As you guys can kind of sense, I really like to be very frugal with my money and not spend more than I actually need to. Keep in mind also, I haven't had the need to buy more toys just from his puppy that Jacqueline's got and have been gifted a lot of toys that has been been lasting for a long time and in addition to that because it is winter time in the Chicago land um, I have no need to buy heart and tick prevention which can be very, another monthly cost because again it is cold outside and there's not really any heartworms that could survive in the winter cold but if you want to get a puppy or a dog and want to analyze your budget and your lifestyle and see how much it'll cost I definitely suggest one really looking at your current situation and seeing how much room out of your budget can you really afford to giving towards your dog slash puppy. It would be a great idea to figure out how much the dog's monthly expenses could really affect your current budget right now. Some questions that you can ask yourself are, well, are you overspending in some areas such as maybe eating out three times a week or four times a week? Maybe you can even dwindle that down, minimize that. Are you ordering takeout, ordering DoorDash? So little stuff like that can really add up on your budget and by minimizing those expenses, it could really cushion and make room for a new puppy or dog. Looking at these expenses, could you ask yourself and see, hey, could I cut back on these? Could you make some sacrifices? Because at the end of the day, you want your puppy to be healthy. You want your dog to live a happy life. And that is less likely to happen if you're not able to pay for your dog's lifestyle. And then number two, if you're thinking about budgeting for a puppy slash dog, you also want to keep in mind for the long term and actually setting aside a thousand, two thousand dollars or an emergency fund 
for your puppy just in case your dog gets hip dysplasia for example or just in case an emergency happens and the vet bills can really rack up in the long run don't make the same mistake i did where i would think like yeah jackson's gonna be healthy i'm gonna make sure that he exercises right he's not gonna be overweight he's not gonna have any health problems the breed that he has doesn't really have any common ones like don't think that way don't make the same mistake i did just because you never know what will happen you never know if it could be genetics it could be very environmental like at the end of the day you never know what will happen and because of that you just want to be careful and cushion yourself with a nice financial environment in case that does happen i definitely suggest getting pet insurance to which one i'm not quite sure you're gonna have to do some research see what's within your budget i know there are a lot of pet insurance companies that have different plans different options different scenarios circumstances so do your research on that and um, maybe I'll make another video on that, but for now, I definitely suggest and recommend getting pet insurance for your puppy. And lastly, another thing that you wanna think about when budgeting for a dog and for thinking long-term is obviously we're in a pandemic right now and the job market is very volatile. And so you never know whether it's this pandemic or the next one or another scenario, you never know when you're gonna lose your job. And if that's the case, and again, going a little bit more on the emergency side, side of things you want to make sure that you have enough money saved up just in case you do lose your job and you're able to sustain your dog's lifestyle for however many months you think you will need until find another job better to be a lot more safer than sorry and by saving up and having that emergency fund you can really save yourself and of course your dog um, in the long run of heartache, stress, and any other problems that could be caused by you not um, giving your dog a healthy lifestyle. But yeah, guys, let me know down below what you guys think, well, how much you guys, for current dog owners, how much you guys budget for your dog slash puppy per month. Obviously, there's no right or wrong on how much amount you spend on your dog. It is dependent on your lifestyle, how much you can budget, how much you cannot. I definitely fall on the more financially conservative side of things just because because I just love the budget that is just my lifestyle but again there is no right or wrong in how much you spend on your dog but I'm curious let me know if you guys want to be transparent please let me know in the comments down below how much you spend on your dog monthly and if there's another expense that you really think highly of let me know in the, down in the comments down below and I'm actually considering since Jackson has hip dysplasia I'm actually considering enrolling him in hydrotherapy classes so I'll let you guys know about that too if, if I decide so and as a reminder I would really love if you guys could hit that like button as it really helps in the YouTube algorithm in spreading this video so that it can potentially help more people and lastly don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really means a lot to Jackson and me tell your dogs you love Love them, Jackson. I love you. Thank you guys for watching and have an amazing day.